Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are a huge topic of conversation once again with the debut of their Netflix docuseries aptly titled Harry and Meghan. It's already a ratings hit with 2.4 million people watching in the United Kingdom on the day it debuted. But it's also facing criticism and sparking rumors about the reaction from the royal family. They realized they're never going to protect you. I was terrified. I didn't want history to repeat itself. Joining us now from London is ABC News Royal contributor Omid Scoby. Omid, many are saying there aren't any real bombshells in these first episodes, but did anything stick out to you? Yeah, Juju, I think the first three episodes were sort of a soft introduction to the world of Harry and Meghan. This is, of course, a show that was initially billed as a sort of look into their love story, often told through the lens of the media. And of course, along the way, we're given historical context. And some of those early moments in the series really focus on the private dates, the romance, the courtship, and everything that led up to, of course, Meghan becoming the Duchess of Sussex. It's a sweet story in many ways. And I think given the hysterical coverage that built up to the launch of those first episodes, I think some people were maybe even disappointed that it didn't have those sort of explosive bombshell moments that people thought might be coming. That said, we're only halfway through, and if you remember that first trailer that was released by Netflix, there's still a lot of things to come from Harry. I think for the palace, they shouldn't really breathe a sigh of relief just yet. You know, Oma, just picking up on what you were saying about this sort of softening of their image, because it's uh, often about the early part of their love story. Do you think it will change people's minds about the, what they think about the Meghan Harry of it all? I think this is a really ambitious series. Firstly, for Netflix, they, of course, have to appeal to as many people as possible. That is viewers of The Crown, viewers of more elevated documentaries such as Seaspiracy, but then also the same people that watch Too Hot to Handle and some of the big reality shows on the network as well. So you're really having to sort of cater to many people. And I think that's why some of those episodes, an hour long in length each, sometimes feel like they're jumping all over the place. We've got the sweet love stories, but then also the really dramatic and quite serious moments that affected them when it came to their safety. And of course, Meghan dealing with racism as soon as she entered that House of Windsor. So, I mean, what could Buckingham Palace's biggest fears be about the impact that this could have on the image of the working royals back in London, especially with King Charles's reign just beginning? Well, listen, ever since we lost the Queen, we've sort of seen the monarchy dealing with the new reality of the British monarchy, which is they no longer have that sort of ring of steel around them, the protective shield that the Queen once offered because, of course, she was so revered. Instead, it's now an institution that is almost safe to criticise and look at in a different way. And I think with Harry and Meghan's documentary series, they bring up the subject of colonialism and imperialism and, of course, slave labour that sit at the foundations of the institution of the monarchy. The guidance that's come from Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace is that, that staff have been watching, members of the family haven't, although I struggle to believe that. But, of course, the big bombshells are still to come in episodes four, five and six. That's when we hear about the secret briefing and the leaks that came from within the House of Windsor that Harry's making sort of claims about and they're going to perhaps want to reply to once that's out in the public domain. Those are episodes four, five and six that are releasing next week. But when it comes to the topic of racism that you mentioned and even the paparazzi handling that topic, what do you think um, the reaction has been in the British press about Meghan and Harry? I think when it comes to any sort of conversation or proper conversation about racism, and, of course, it is a really nuanced subject. As we see in this series, of course, Meghan, a biracial woman, hasn't sort of experienced some of the difficulties that black women in the Western world still face to this day. In fact, Meghan herself talks about not really being that aware of her colour or sort of heritage until she stepped in to the British royal family. But it only takes one look at some of the coverage that Meghan received, being called a woman from the wrong side of the tracks, being called the woman that's straight out of Compton, all of the other sort of negative tropes that are attached to her, there clearly was a problem. The sad thing is many people here still don't want to talk about it. It seems like there are many deals that have been inked by the Sussexes, and critics here have said that 
Harry and Meghan had said that they wanted privacy and are now allowing people more and more into their lives with these media deals. But the couple insists they don't really want to do that. What do they want? Yeah, it's interesting. I think this conversation about the couple wanting privacy is almost misunderstood to a point. In fact, if you look back at any of their interviews, they've never said they wanted it. They just wanted to control it. Now, is that something that's realistic or achievable in the day that we live in? It's interesting now that they've broken away from that. They've chosen to give so much away in this documentary series. I would say there were almost moments watching those early episodes that I felt slightly uncomfortable with the amount that I had seen from their private world. It was almost like I was looking into a space in which I wasn't actually allowed to, to see. Sure, as they say in television, stay tuned. Thank you so much for joining us, Omen Scobie, as always. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.